Hello and welcome to the CYF course. We continue today on the topic of intergeneration and we'll especially address the challenge of generational gaps. You know that we've seen we need four generations to establish anything. Any vision, we can say it is solid when it reaches the fourth generation. This is very interesting and this is much beyond our individualistic and instant culture. We've seen that in Psalm 78 about speaking to the next generation who will tell it to the next generation who will tell it to the next generation. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we could speak about Joseph, the fourth generation. And in this four generation, every generation is responsible for one specific aspect. Abraham, the fathers, they formulate the truth. They lay foundations. Isaac, the sons, they demonstrate the truth. Jacob, the grandchildren, they authenticate the truth. And Joseph, the great-grandchildren, they administer the truth. This is so interesting. In Joel 1 verse 3 we read, Tell your children about it in the years to come, and let your children tell their children. Pass the story down from generation to generation. We see this is so important. We have exactly the same principle of this cooperation between the generations at the spiritual level. We read, for instance, in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, you have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people, who will be able to pass them on to others. And we see again four generations. Paul, Timothy, to other trustworthy people, and others. We see this chain of generation from one to the next. And this is so important that we have that in mind. We need to train people who can train others. We need to reproduce ourselves in people who can produce others. This is the key of multiplication. And this spiritual principle of passing on from generation to the next is at the heart of it. Let me read to you a few quotations about generational transfer. Generational transfer is not limited to maintaining a good relationship with the next generation, but in a way that corresponds to God's vision to prepare the future generation to become stewards of the investment made in their fathers. We must learn to build on three to four generations simultaneously. Roger and Sue Mitchell reminds us that in the progression of the kingdom, it takes three generations to move from a piney state to a situation of potential fulfillment. And that one of the key factors from a biblical point of view in triggering such a moment is a successful passing on from one generation to the next. So this moment of transition between the generation is vital. And the last one, we don't just have the responsibility to raise the younger generation as best as we can giving them space to express themselves, while at the same time telling ourselves that when they come at, of age, our children will do what they want. No, I have a responsibility to prepare the future generation, to become stewards of what God has deposited in my own generation through my fathers. Wow. This takes us out of the usual mindset of I do whatever I want. I have a responsibility. My fathers have deposited something in me that I have the responsibility to carry on and to pass on to my children. This is true also at the spiritual level. This is true also at the physical level. Of course, this is not a perfect chain. There are always challenges and people going their own way, people forgetting the Lord, but God is speaking about the general tendency, the general direction we want to go on, without controlling, without manipulating, without putting pressure and expectations, but praying for that to happen and doing our best. Now the enemy knows how important it is, and he will do all he can to cut this generational transfer and to bring division between the generations. 
Let's read the last scripture of the Old Testament in Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. Look, I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord arrives. His preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. So we see that there is a heart of the fathers and the heart of the children separated. There is a gap, there is a breach, there is distance, there is misunderstanding, lack of respect, lack of recognition, lack of release, lack of honor. And we see that it's like an open door on our nation for the enemy to come and to strike. Actually, it's even written that God will strike the land with a curse. So, we need to be careful in the way we relate with the other generations. And we need to align with God's standards and values if we want a protection over our nations. Is it mostly a Western challenge? Yes, we have many people who are rebellious, who are reacting against their parents, education, or uh, the way they rear them up, and they want to do things better, they want to reinvent the wheel and do everything. And maybe in some cultures like Asia and Africa, there is a, a little bit more respect for the elderly. Um, we assimilate the white hair with wisdom, which is not always the case. But there is at least this respect and honor for the older ones. And we need to be careful of what kind of doors we open in our nation through our attitudes. What touches me in this scripture is that generational transfer is most of all a matter of shared heart. A heart that gives and a heart that receives. God says, I will bring back the heart of the fathers to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers. So it speaks about a heart-to-heart -heart reconnection. And this is so important. If fathers and mothers do not have the desire to give their heart, and sons or daughters do not accept to receive the heart offered, then the fruits of the transfer through the generation will never reach maturity. There is a need of humility, of openness. You know, heart-to-heart uh, -heart connection, as we'll see in other sessions, is foundational in um, the spiritual formation of the next generation. Proverbs 23, verse 26. Solomon is writing to his son, My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. This is so important. And we need to do that with our children, seeking the heart of our children, giving, offering our heart to our children. And we need to do that also with our parents, because we are also children. And seeking the heart of our parents, giving our hearts to our parents is sometimes more difficult. I remember one of my friends who shared with me a story that really touched me. He worked on this aspect of heart-to-heart -heart connection with his children, and they were pretty good with that. But one day, God spoke to him about his father, and that he needed to seek the heart of his father. And he asked God, what should I do, Lord? And the Lord told him, invite your father to spend a weekend with you. What? A weekend with my father? What do you want us to talk about? What do you want us to do together? The relationship was polite, but it was shallow, it was superficial. How, how are the kids doing? What are you doing these days? His father was coming from a very narrow church and from a generation who did not know how to share their emotion. So the heart connection was something that was difficult. And my friend, he really struggled inside for, I think, for two years, because he didn't dare to invite his father for a weekend. Finally, he took his courage and he did it. And the father 
was as puzzled as him. What? You want us to spend the weekend together? What, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to talk about? Could we take mom at least? <laughs> Because if mom was coming, somebody would do the conversation and somebody would cook. But no, he just wanted to be with his father, son and father, alone. Wow. The father did not respond. I think he waited for two years before responding. And they went for a weekend. They had a good time. They did not just spend time drinking tea and looking at each other in the blue of their eyes. But they did activities. They went fishing, they played cards, they walked. And my friend, he had prepared a lot of questions to seek the heart of his father. Tell me about your childhood. What was your greatest joy? What was your biggest hurt? How did you manage it? How was your father encouraging you? Oh, he did not encourage you. So how did you react to that? How did you know about what job doing? How was your relationship with God? Can you share about your life? And the father was quite happy to share, but it was a little bit awkward in the beginning. But at the end, their relationship was totally transformed. They knew and appreciated one another much more. I think a few months later, the father died. And my friend thought, wow, fortunately, I did not wait too long to obey, and my father neither. We had this time before he's dead. And that's a privilege and that's a responsibility. We need to seek the heart of the next generation. We need to seek the heart of the former generation. We need to offer our heart to these generations. Of course, if you are in a family where your father is abusive and he beat you and he mistreats you and he hits you, you will not offer your heart like that. You may send a letter, you may do some steps towards seeking his heart, but you do not offer your heart fully. You go step by step. You need to win the trust and you need to gain trust yourself and see what is possible in this generation. But God is encouraging us because the generational blessing is like a hose. And sometimes the hole is filled with dirt and the water cannot go through anymore. And we need to clean the hose for the water to continue to run through the hose. It's the same for the generational blessing. We need to take care of the hose. We need to make sure that the flow of blessing through the generation can flow freely. This is so important. What is the fruit of a shared heart? I think the fruit of the shared heart is a double anointing on the next generation. It's like the situation between Elijah and Elisha. At one point, God told Elisha, you need to go and anoint your successor, Elisha. And <clears throat> you pour yourself into this man. And at one point, Elijah went to heaven and just before he told Elisha, what do you want? And Elisha said, I want double anointing of what was on your shoulders. And God said, I don't know if I can grant you with that. If you see me when I'm taken to heaven, it will happen. And Elisha looked at Elijah when he went to heaven. He was able to see him and he shouted, my father, my father, chariot of Israel. And, you know, he was considering Elijah as his father. There was a father-son relationship between this old prophet and this younger prophet. Then Elisha looked around and he saw the coat of Elijah on the ground. He took it in his hands. He went to the Jordan and he hit the Jordan with the coat, saying, Where is the God of Elijah? And 
the Jordan open up. Wonderful. We read about seven miracles in the life of Elijah. We read about 14 miracles in the life of Elisha. Double anointing. So when you walk with a father who really blesses you, who pass on to you what he has received from the previous generation, what he has received from God, plus your own experience with God, there is a double anointing. The one that had been passed on to you, the one you receive directly from the Lord. And this is what God wants to multiply through the generation. This is the fruit of the heart-to-heart -heart connection. And the spirit of Elijah is still around. It came for the first coming of Jesus in John the Baptist. And I think he will come again at the end of times because we still need this spirit that brings back the heart of children to their fathers, the heart of fathers to their children in humility to reconnect with one another. We'll put a few questions on the screen and you can share and pray together. And I encourage you to be true and to really reflect upon your own life, your own family situation, your own ministry or church situation and uproot any rebellious spirit, any spirit of independence that wants to restart all over again and not receive and honor what you got from your fathers. May the Lord bless you.